that is a go go. Do, 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 do. And good morning. Just try to keep an eye on the frame rate and whether or not I can actually stream my big Lucas monitor at the moment. It seems to be doing okay. All right, so um, more coding. Uh, did a couple of live streams yesterday, set up the gear, had a couple of test things. I tried to crop the screen and only do like a two thirds. I've got the 3440 by 1440 Dell ultra wide monitor um, and only a 2012 MacBook Pro. So it's um, one of the streams was a little bit choppy and that was annoying. But uh, then I tried cropping the screen and then I couldn't actually get a high definition output uh, after one of doing one of the little node school modules the other day. So worth saying again, if you don't know what uh, node school is, uh, it's the series of workshops uh, built on a common framework and they're all done in the command line, uh, such as this and Check that I've still got good audio and everything's working. Okay, I think everything's working. I'm just going to go. Uh, my headphones are starting to complain at me. So, do the magic ear swapping. Do, 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 and it's on. And one of the good things about the wireless Apple headphones is that you can just use one and uh, charge them while you're going to be charged. So if it does run out uh, after a few hours, um, you can swap it over. So enough talking. What are we going to do today? So that is the question. So NodeSchool, uh, NodeSchool.io, based on NodeJourneyus, and a whole bunch of cool, lots of little workshops. So I did think to myself maybe I should do another one of the core ones that are really useful. Uh, we did learn your HTML. I did the JavaScript one which is pretty basic. Um, scopes, chains, and closures. You end up doing learn you know quite a lot when you do a, like a node school meetup and get together. So you end up doing that uh, fairly Times a year or something. Um, I've probably been doing these for about three or four years, I think, but when I did it, there was only like three or four. And now there are many, there are many, 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 and I haven't done anywhere near all of these. JavaScript best practices, okay, that looks good. Um, but maybe I'll try something difficult. Maybe we'll try scopes, chains, and closures. Close yours. Um, let's have a quick look. Ooh, issues. It has a lot. It has a lot of issues. Deprecation warning. Yeah, I was getting that on some of the other ones. I think there's a module. Um, so, yeah. I'm sure we'll find out. Garbage collection time has disappeared. And the closure exercise. Um, okay, so. Just people asking for help. Explain okay. correctly in Windows 10, so that could be frustrating if you want to play a at home. The deprecation warning is uh, yeah, the asynchronous function without callback is deprecated. You can put in a fake callback, an empty callback to that module. I was looking at that the other day. But anyway. Uh, a bit confused after one scopes. Yeah, I can see how you can be confused. I get confused by this stuff at school. So, let's just make sure we've got the complete scopes, planes, scopes, chains, closures. Oh, and there's a shortcut, SCCJS. Oh, well, that's handy. Um, and let's make 
directory in 2017, July 28th, 2728. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. And, okay, that's verbose, but it looks fine. Deprecated mini match. Update mini match, etc. Um, well, I think I've got everything up to date, so let's ignore that for now. Oh, NPM install mini match. Three or four. Alright, so, what's that? Yep, that's latest. So three oh two to what uh regex DLS issue. Okay. Well is that okay, that seems fine. And then it was SD S C C S S C C J S. Woot! Okay, scope to change enclosures. We've got exercise number one. Ooh, learning about scopes. All right, it's going to change the closures. The garbage collection all have one thing in common. They're often hand waved away. How do closures actually work? Where does garbage collection occur? What really is a scope chain? Well, it's great because I can't remember any of this. Um, in this workshop, we'll discover it's not black magic after all. No hand waving is required to explain these language features. In fact, you've been using them all along without realizing. Well, that sounds just delightful. The main type of scope in JavaScript is lexical scoping. Present in the language from the very beginning, this is the scope created within a function and the one most developers are familiar with. ES6 recently defined block scoping. This scope is created within curly brace blocks. Okay. Uh, the way initializing variables. The way a variable is initialized determines which scope it is. Lexical scope. Var is used to denote a variable which is lexically scoped to the current function. Uh, function, some function, variable, a variable. Excellent. So another thing we can do is I might just break this screen up a little bit more. Old team up Um Probably get a little bit more wiggle room this way. And then if I just pop that over, well, that's probably not necessary. Anyway, we could just use this as our node terminal. Right. Um, a variable is lex lexically scoped within some file. Block scope let and const are used to denote variables which are block scoped to the current curly brace block. If true, let a variable. Okay, a variable is block scoped within its curly braces. Fair enough. Let the difference between let and var. I might have to revisit that. Oh, I don't know. If you don't know it, um, uh, what's it called? You don't know JavaScript. Yes. And Getify, what's his name? Getify? Getify. Um, uh, book series, did it on Kickstarter. It's amazing. All of the books are here. Async Performance, Async AES and Beyond. All of these things have their own individual little readmes and all of their own chapters, and if you really want to know about JavaScript, this is an amazing, amazing uh, series. And I haven't read all of it, but I've tried to delve into it uh, a couple of years ago, whenever this was. When did it come out? Just out of interest. Do, 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 do. Carl Simpson. Uh, dates. Do I not see the dates? They just don't. Okay, it's made delivery October 2013. So it was a while ago when this came out. So and this is Scopes Chains and Closures and empty file. Alright, so what are we doing? Your mission in an empty file, create a function foo which contains one. Okay, so y01.js. Let's just do it this way for now. Um, Okay. 
just let it go. You complete me, Dingo and Soda. Okay, so just it's not very organized this morning. This morning, I think it's something to do with me. I'm not healthy. Or please recompile the running install script. Uh, really? Okay. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, That is correct for that as well, not for app install, for app view. Hmm. I'm going to do it. So, ah, you, you complete me. Um, I should be a bit more verbose in what I'm saying if there's no one on the channel. Uh, you complete me is a plugin uh, for uh, um, uh, code completion in the terminal so that it's like working with a regular uh, um, coding integrated development environment, IDE. Uh, and one of the things that sometimes you need to do, oh okay, I probably just need to go in and run it, don't I? So let's just open up the terminal and the programming. You Name the directory. You complete me. Okay, so um, hmm. okay, so full oh, installation guide. Uh, bundle, yes, I've got that. Instructions. Here we go. Ah, here we go. Install the pi. So if I maybe have a search for it, just like history grep install dot pi. Ah, install lang blah blah blah. So where is it from though? Ah, oh, it's from inside Vim. Okay, fair enough. Um, that's the C and turn gives me JavaScript. So I think that's all I need at the moment. Um, change vim bundle you complete me lovely darts okay here it is so sometimes it needs to be recompiled if it's updated because I just updated the um, plugins the bundle plugins in vim this morning so obviously it's actually updated to a later version of you complete me and now it needs to recompile the binary so that it can do C and JavaScript completion. One of the annoying things it uses the turn.js uh, completer. Uh, so that's all sorted now. Um, download 100% complete. Do, 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 do. So it's um, words, Gareth. The, it's, Having a plugin infrastructure is super handy. Um, if I just look at bundle, I go, oh look, look at all these bundles. So these are all just um, Git uh, repositories that get pulled and cloned, and then there are a whole bunch of plugins for making like colorized, you know, Vim colorized, and then using snippets, and um, it understands uh, syntax and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and all sorts of things, team ups, integration, all this sort of stuff that makes it, you know, my development environment. But uh, sometimes it needs updating a little bit of maintenance. Um, and not too often with Vim, but it makes it really nice to be able to have just a single config file that says, you know, jump onto a new machine, set up all my stuff, and having a .files repository where you actually save that file into your GitHub account, for example, into a Git repository, so you can just pull down a Git repository, run an install script, and it immediately just goes and downloads a fresh version of everything and puts it where you expect it to be, and for the most part, you get your uh, build environment with all of the print fonts and uh, all of the, the 
customized stuff that you expect, but it's all just in the text file and says, do that. I quite like that. Sorry this is taking so long. It's supposed to be a terrible stream and you can always skip forward because nobody's currently watching. So, you know, just skip forward until it looks like I'm coding again. Okay, what are we doing here? Ah, it's the C um, functionality. I reckon some of that. Well, it's written in C++. Python support, utils, versioning, core, CLang completers, all of that stuff. Okay. What else do we want to talk about right now? So, what would be a good one to do next? Let's have a quick look here. I'd be happy. We have lots of promises. I don't we got into promises. I never really understood them. Yeah, six. Some of the new uh, uh, features that might be interesting. That one was very long. Oh, it's got a few things there. Template strings, arrow functions, arrow functions in this, arrow press. So this could be good before doing um, uh, React, because I know that there's a few React. Oh, hang on. Is that bacon life? Thinking in React, learn new React. Bacon love, learn concepts of functional reactive programming using the Bacon JS library. I have not seen that before. Linux tool type workshop. Oh, hello. Right. We're back again. Alright. Let's go back to where we were. Um, where what were we actually doing? Um, um, oh, scope. Scopes. Yep, doesn't know where we are. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Nerd school scopes and closures. And cool, okay. Myo1.js. And excellent. Alright, so scopes and closure enclosures and print. Let's see what that puzzle was that we had to do. Your mission in an empty file, create a function foo, which contains one variable lexically scoped name bar. Um, okay. What about how do we want that written? Bar bob equals function blah and then um, bar bar just bar bar and then Verify O one. Wait, no wait. Oh, programming. Let's go. And scopes and closures. Twenty seventeen. Blah. And then scopes and closures. Verify O one. Solution loaded. The structure is correct. Almost there, check the errors. Okay. Solution loaded, not okay, the structure is correct. Expected, actual, okay, fair enough. So you actually don't want, you want what was what the actual question? Let me just try that again. I'm using, I don't read this well enough sometimes. Um, with catch about what are we doing? Uh, create a function foo. Oh well, no, that's not a function foo, is it? So what about if we could do that and then try almost there? Or oh, I know, I know. This one's function foo. Terrible, can't you? All right, function foo. Bar bar. Excellent. But it was interesting. What do we have down the bottom there? Notes. There are also four other scopes in language global with catch eval. These tend not to be used much, so we will ignore them. This workshop will concentrate only on lexical scoping. Fair enough. So, what's our. Um, we've done the first one. Yay! Um, scope chains. Okay, scope chains. 
nesting. Scopes can be nested. If they can. Uh, right, quit. Uh, copy 0102.js and y02. And right, we're we done now. Scopes could be nested. Both the lexical and block scope can contain other scopes. Indeed, inner is a nested lexical scope inside the lexical scope of some fun. You have to look that up, the difference between a lexical scope and a block scope, because they both use curly braces, so that can't be the only thing. Um, then, okay, the nested block scope inside the block scope of if the while is a nested block scope. Oh, okay. Nested lexical scope block scope. Okay. Well, we'll... So, I think that I either missed out on the real benefits of actually reading the first section because it does say that the var is used to denote a variable which is lexically scoped to the current function and then a variable is lexically scoped within some fun. Yes, let and const used to denote variables which are block scoped to the current curly brace block. The variable is box is block scoped within a variable is block scoped within the, its curly braces. So I think that's actually quite confusing because they're almost making the point here the differentiation is that it's uh, rather than var, it's let and const which leads to the difference between lexical scoping and block scoping, but that's not the case, as shown by the, you know, the first instance. Um, you don't just use let within um, curly braces for if and while loops. So that could curly brace blocks. Okay, so you just make a curly brace block. The weird thing is that functions use curly braces as well, so it's like that is a scope created within a function and one most developers are familiar with and ES6 recently defined block scoping. Okay, so maybe it's just being more uh, uh, inclusive and verbose about exactly what scoping is and saying that stuff inside curly braces is now also important but it has a new name. So anyway, let's move on from this because this is not coding, it's just being a little pedantic, but it would be better to have a better explanation in this workshop module. Scope change, nesting, yes, nesting, yes, and the while, yes, so that's a uh, nested block scope, uh, then the if would be the nested block scope inside the lexical scope of some type. Okay, so fair enough. That's clear. I don't know why, but it is clear which ones are which. Scope to variable access. All nested scopes follow the same rule. Each nested inner scope has access to outer scope variable, but not vice versa. Yes, that makes complete sense. So um, function inner can access outer var, and it can access its own inner var, but some func cannot access inner var, that's only for the inner function. Great, I'm sure that's what they just said there with words. Multiple nested scopes. Uh, nesting is limited to a single inner scope, it can be multiple nested scopes, uh, each of which appear to be scoped variable access rule above with one addition. Sibling scopes are also restricted from accessing each other's variables, so that's fine. Inner and inner two can have their own defined variables, which uh, they can't access other than themselves, and some funk can't access either of them as well. Scope tree, looking at the next one from top down, a tree of scopes is formed. Uh, yes, so function inner and function inner two can have their own groove, and then foo is the third one. Yeah, okay, so that produces the tree. Fair enough. So this is all fairly straightforward so far. Um, inner can access outer, but not vice versa. Outer scope change. Looking from most inner to most outer scope forms. Looking from most inner to most outer scope forms a scope chain. Oh, okay, so that's just specific to if you are inside function foo, you can access 
anything in inner two and anything in some front, which is anything in inner two and anything in some front. So that's cool. Modify the solution from lesson one, well that's handy. All this code sitting here. Um, so foo contains a function, uh, zip, which itself contains one variable lexically scoped. All right, so uh, function func shan zip, uh, which itself contains one variable scope called flux. Flux. Thank you. All right, um, and then verify. And that's fair enough. Verify into school reasoning. Uh, global foo. Bah, bah. Oh, really? Okay. So you can see up here that what it expected. I'm just going like, you know, the global end line, function foo, new line, tab, and then uh, function, uh, sorry, variable bar. So I was meant to leave. The Vaba. Sorry about that. Leaving in Vaba. Okay. So, solution. Yes, all is correct. Yay. Created scope chain using lexical scoping and var statements. Scope chain you created now looks like this zip with var quax, foo with Vaba, and then global. By following the arrows, we can see yada yada. Next lesson. Let's write and quick and copy O2 to O3 and then by O3. Oh, I don't need to do that. I can just write this one. Anyway. Vim things. Global scope and shadowing. Okay, cool. Oh, many words. Understanding where scope chains end is an important part of scoping. Fair enough. All JavaScript runtime must implicitly create a global scope object, window in the browser, global in mode, which sits at the top of every scope chain. Indeed it does. In scopes we covered how usage of a var or let dictates the scope of the variables being defined. Yes we did. When assigning a variable without using either of var, let, etc., the variable is assumed to exist in an outer scope, which is a terrible idea uh, and leads to horrible confusion. Always define your variables outside of the global scope. That's just horrible. Okay, the JavaScript runtime follows these steps to assign a variable. Search within the current scope. If not found, search within the outer scope. If found, go to six, which is assigned the value. If not found, repeat to until the global scope is reached. If not found in the global scope, create it on window global objects. Really? Oh, to assign a variable. Oh, yes. No, fair enough. To assign a variable. So, okay. So let's go through this example because this should be good. In this way, it's possible to accidentally define a global variable. Consider the following example. Two equals two. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. That makes sense. This is sort of what I thought was happening. It's like, that's a terrible idea. So search within the current scope. If not found searching in the outer scope. Note the fact of la note the lack of var or let, etc. for foo equals two to JavaScript runtime will follow the above algorithm first checking the scope of inner orange and then of some funk. Yes, and then the global scope. Uh, step five is then executed. Step five being if not found in global scope, created on window global objects. Um, so uh, step five is then executed. Executed. So foo becomes a variable in the global scope. Yes. Okay. So this this is why it's a terrible, terrible idea. You've got foo over here, which is in this inner function. If you forget your var or let or const, then it will basically say um, this is not local. So therefore, um, oh, there is no. There is no uh, foo defined yet. That's the problem, right? 
So we're actually defining foo. So if in, in the outer function of some funk it was var scope var equals one and var foo equals two, or var, var foo equals three, for example, and then the inner function would just be changing foo from three to two. But because foo doesn't exist, it's like, I'm going to create foo, but where am I going to create it? I'm going to create it basically, it goes all the way back to global and then goes, doesn't exist. You're now a global variable. So cool, this is a terrible, terrible idea. So great. Phrase another way by accidentally forgetting to use var, you're going to foot ban yourself, which is not a good thing. So that's cool, we got that. Remember, only inner scopes can access variable and outer scopes. In this case, some funk scope is an inner scope, with global scope allowing access through to some funk. Yes, that is true. Shadowing. A variable is created in a step zero of the above algorithm when viral let is used. Step zero was search within the current scope. Yeah. really a step zero unless you're starting to count differently again. The variable assigned to the correct scope and execution moves on and any assigned to that variable following the above algorithm is perfectly valid to define two different variables in different scopes with the same name. Uh, yes, of course it is because they're completely separate functions and therefore it's like when you define an integer in a for loop. The, the scope of the for loop means that that integer only works in the loop and then of course outside of that i equals doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's also valid to do this in nested scopes. Um, okay, so this is where we get into shadowing. So this is interesting because var foo equals 2 also, the inner function has access to the outer function, which is also foo. So, water the plants. Okay, that's important. Very much for the water the plants. So, Turn notifications off. Lovely. Um, the food inside inner is said to shadow the food inside inside some fun. Shadowing means that the inner scope only has access to its own food. There's no way for it to access the food defined in some fun. Okay, this can also be an accidental source of bugs, especially when there is deep nesting or long functions. Yeah, this all seems like a Terrible, terrible idea. So, start with the solution from the previous lesson and assign a value to quarks uh, inside foo. Don't use var or let. Alright. The value should be different to the value at sign. Uh, Starting with the solution from the previous lesson, assign a value to quarks inside foo. Oh. Quarks inside foo, let's call it two. I don't think it cares, does it? The value should be different to the value inside when defining quarks inside zip. Uh, once complete, it should be different. Okay, so do we need to assign something here as well? It's just, that's not terribly clear, is it? Verify 03. Sure, okay, so it did want us to define something. Assign a value to Quox even though Foo doesn't have access to the Quox inside zip. Yeah. Foo doesn't have access to the Quox inside zip. Zip for Quox. Bar bar. Quox becomes global. Yes, that's correct, isn't it? didn't assign it, so it's not inside foo anymore. The scoping is actually quarks becomes global variable, uh, and that is just a local variable. Shadow is the global scoped quarks.
Okay, great. Next lesson. All right. Well, I think that makes sense so far. So let's go for closures. Closures. All right. Sorry, this one's this little live stream sort of seems to be me prattling on a bit and not really understanding how uh, to do a good live, interesting live stream. I think if some humans were to show up at some point, it might get a bit more exciting. Um, closures or, or, or distracted. That could be another thing. Uh, closures are an important part of JavaScript language. They are what enables callback last programming most prominent in Node, which is, as we all know, one of the core fantastic things about Node, which is like, here's a function. Uh, go away and do this thing, and when you're ready, come back and interrupt me and let me know that you've got the result. Meanwhile, I'll process all these other things, which is why you can get this really amazing uh, amount of throughput in the node. It's one of the reasons I like it. Um, all right. Excellent mechanism for handling the asynchronous nature of most JavaScript tasks. To probably understand closures, let's start with an example scope chain. Okay, foo, uh, inner, and some func. Fair enough. Let's say some func declares a variable bar. Okay. Given how nesting scope works, it's possible for an inner scope within some func to access bar. Yes, that's true. Um, for an inner scope within some func, that's where, in this example, let's say inner accesses bar. Okay, so inner alert bar. Great. So it just pops up the, the value of the variable bar. The inner is said to close over bar. Therefore, inner is a closure. Um, inner is said to close over bar, therefore in that is a closure. Okay, the power of suppose, um, it's not a great example though, is it? Uh, the power to callback style, the power, the power, the two power to callback style of programming closure will be maintained even if in that isn't executed immediately. It's perfectly legal in JavaScript to pass in and around and return it from some func for later execution. Fair enough, yep. Uh, all the while bar will continue to be available. Uh, yeah, all right. Your mission, modify the solution from the previous lesson to set bar equals true inside zip. Okay. Um, then return the function zip as the result of foo. Uh -huh. okay. Return zip. But we're not using the function, are we? To return, return the function zip, isn't it? Modify the solution for the previous lesson to set bar equals true inside zip. Okay, so do we need the other ones this time or not? So do we go bar equals true? Okay, do we need that? Okay, bar, bar, bar equals true, return zip. Um, let's see if that's what they meant. Hang on. Which one are we up to? Closure is indeed a four, isn't it? Um, and then right to a four dot JS. Who change? That's a good question. Uh, in so far. Uh, I have some file with Zim. So, rename Vim. Vim rename save file. Rename it. Save as. So not to get your old file. Let's bring it together. Save as and not delete your old file, but you have to do that manually. That's fine. So, what about if we save as 04.js? Save as 04.js. There we go. Save as with an exclamation mark. That's a good guess. Um, so, now we've made it into 04. So, of course, and three is probably broken, but we'll get back to that. Um, what were we doing, and why wasn't it working? 
show. Almost there. Oh, here we go. We have an expectation. It's quite kind of interesting. Return zip zip dark wax. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That stuff is still there. All right. All right. Okay, so mark box return zip zip and bar equals true. Do you want to be a story? Alright, so that works. You just expected to have the variables still in there, the way that it was testing for the solution. You closed over the variable bar and types inside zip and then return zip. Yes, we did. Alright. Um, so look at the scope chain for your solution. Zip bar equals true. Var bar, return zip. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, by referencing bar within zip and query closure, where zip closes over the variable bar from its parent scope. Foo, since we return the function zip, the reference to bar is maintained, and hence the closure is maintained until zip is no longer required. This is an interesting implication for memory, which we'll cover in the next lesson. Well, that sounds fun. Let's do that. And garbage collection. Hoi. What is going on here? Your mission. Your mission has browsers and things involved. Fire up a new tab in Chrome. Alright, this is getting exciting. Um, memory in JavaScript is managed automatically by the runtime. The runtime decides when, if, to release any allocated memory. This decision process is called garbage collection. Every JavaScript runtime has their own algorithm for general garbage collection, but most use a variation of market sweep. Mark and sweep algorithm works by marking references to memory, variables, functions, etc., which are still reachable from active code. Any reference is not marked, which is not marked, is swept into the garbage. Still reachable from active code. Okay. Maybe then it's free. Well, that's interesting. This concept of marking reachable memory is particularly relevant to closures. Oh, yes, I can imagine it would be. When the closure inner is returned from some func, Okay, so the alert bar, so we're calling that a closure. I still think that's a bit simplistic, but sure, it's a closure. It maintains its reference to, because you're returning a function. So it's if it's returning alert bar, then uh, you can see how that works. Or, no, inner, it returns inner, yeah? We've got some fun. Oh, Ugh, what a muppet, you're not even reading it. It's right there, right there, return inner. So it's, okay, so that's a closure. Closures, really easy. So, you're returning a function, the function is inner, and then what inner does is it just alerts bar, the variables in the outer scope, so that's cool. So, uh, it changes reference to bar, mark and sweep algorithm will mark bar as reachable, and hence will not garbage collect it. Okay, so, when the closure inner is returned from some function, it maintains its reference to bar. So it's a closure because it still has that variable from an outer scoping, even if that outer scoping is no longer used or relevant. For inner to correctly resolve its reference to bar, not only does the memory for bar need to be kept, but the scope chain which describes how the reach bar must also be kept. Okay. Once the reference to inner is no longer required, it can be marked for garbage collection, which in turn means bar can also be marked to find an entire scope engine. Scope chain can be marked resulting in freeing of all the memory. In this way, scope, scope chains, closures, and garbage collection are all closely related. Your mission in this challenge, you will be required to use Chrome DevTools uh, for detecting garbage collection events. Follow these steps to get a feel of what happens when Chrome performs its mark and sweep algorithm. Fire up a new tab in Chrome. Open the DevTools timeline. Ensure the settings are like so. What are they like? Causes JS memory. Okay, so we're going to open the browser. We're going to go command splat i. Is that right? Or is it option splat i? Option command i. Uh, option command i. And we are going to have. Uh, do we have more here? Other thing. And what is it we meant to look like? What are we looking for here? Profiling, squiggles, and the things and the stuff, and... Yeah. 
the memory, right? Like, we look at the memory. Take the heat, the coolant allocation for load. No, you don't want to load anything. It's just a snapshot and see what happens. Um, I'm not sure this is actually in. Sure, it sounds like so. Open the DevTools Timeline tab. Timeline. DevTools. Chrome DevTools Timeline. Let's have a wee look. Warning, this page is totes out of date. So, okay, so there is no timeline there anymore. Uh, tell me what it is though. Performance analysis reference. Page deprecates here the following sections for up to date. Report performance if this chart in the three activity. So what do we want? Have we got any other warnings? Record performance. So we can do that. Here we go. Okay, screenshots, memory, develop performance, quick record. Okay, performance quick. So we just go back to the elements because I know that was performance. And then now. And memory timeline. Click the cord. Profile. Two seconds. Buffer usage. Okay. This is learning things. Oh, capture a new recording. Record and evaluate the page load. So are we meant to go somewhere. Um, visit. Stack Overflow or one of your favorites. All right, so let's just get that. Let's drop it into our recorded monster. There we go. So now we've actually got something to profile, which is useful. It's very useful. Okay, blocks by client. That's all fantastic. And then do we want to stop the profiling? I'm guessing we want to stop it. Um, File chart view frames, click the solid gray record button to begin capturing data, visit, click the now red record button to stop capturing data. Okay, so I think we've got it going on. Okay. Loading profile, there's a lot of profile to load, I'm guessing. There we go. Doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing, doing many things. Um, uh, only memory selected. Okay, so. Screenshots? What oh, screenshots? Anyway. Oh, it's actually got screenshots of the site. Wow, this is pretty, this has come a long way since the last time I was playing with DevTools. Um, okay, you should now see something similar to. Uh, yes, we do. So true. And the part we're interested in is when memory suddenly drops. Okay, memory, oh, it comes off the cliff. So what do we got? Do we have a cliff? Where do we have a cliff? We have memory, memory, memory. Is that the cliff? It's not much of a cliff. Can we, um, can we make that bigger up? Capture settings. Or is it this is GPU memory? Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, let's say, oh, there we go, of course it does. This is network frames and direction main. So what are these? These are network traffic. And we really just want the menu, don't we? Anyway, let's figure out what's going on. Uh, part of interest is in the menu, so the drops, click this drop in memory to select it. Now look for the yellow event called GC event. We see about 6.3 men collected. All right, so let's get our GC event. Oh, uh, um, that's interesting. Now we can like slide left and right. Okay. Boom. Yeah. Okay, so compile major GC. There we go, what are you doing? Oh, it's this one. 5.3, major GC, 5.3 meg collector. Okay, we are actually getting there. Clicking this event will reveal information about total memory garbage collected and how long it took. Do we have other information? 
Okay, down here, major GC summary is self time 25 milliseconds collected 5.3. There's more information here anonymous, anonymous, anonymous functions or something. jQuery.min.js, uh, value of the script, etc. Oh, the call tree. Is this relevant? Yes, I think there's a bunch of functions in there. Um, okay, basically that was what we were, uh, were meant to do. Uh, note, if you'd like to get that lovely completed label for this lesson, just run the... Oh, here we go. One particularly interesting thing to note here is the length of time garbage collection can take, often well beyond the 16 millisecond maximum required to keep it within a single frame at 60 frames per second. Um, while garbage collection occurs, it blocks the main thread, which means other JavaScript cannot be executed until the event completes. Be conscious of how janky your application may become due to extensive garbage collection events. Alright, good point. And so if we go verify, Shazam! And then we basically have completed scopes, claims, scopes chains, and closures. Um, I think I might stop there for a second and then I know, grab some breakfast and then do another do another node school workshop uh, in a minute and see how this uh, stream went because if it's still difficult to process then uh, that could be problematic but it doesn't look too bad it looks like the CPU here is actually chugging along quite nicely and go yeah and it hasn't been too bad so that is good to know and I shall have some breakfast I shall make some coffee I shall come back and do another stream momentarily this has been lots of good fun and feedback appreciated future humans who may end up watching this uh, I hope it's been useful if you have requests or uh, advice and I'm very open to it. Until next time.